So here on DW, we can talk to Christian Kastrop. He is professor for public finance here in Berlin at the Free University and a fellow of the Hertie School also in Berlin. But most importantly, he's one of the architects of Germany's debt break. And that is the very issue that the German chancellor has just stumbled over. Today, he spoke in Parliament, Mr. Kastrop. What did you make of the measures he's now taking to essentially circumvent what you helped put into place? No, I think, uh, of course, every rule has uh, some uh, deadlocks. And of course, in special situations, every rule in the world might face some problems. And uh, the German rule just faced some problems due to the critical uh, times uh, where a lot of need has uh, to meet the resources. So uh, I think the chancellor did, by and large, very well. I think he had to explain that. I had, he had to talk about the judgment of the federal constitutional court. And I think it will be, as he announced, uh, it will be necessary to have a lot of measures now uh, to contradict that, uh, that, that rule. When we look at this whole issue, it's very much a homemade issue. It's Germany failing to meet its own measures. Outside mm -hmm. observers have called it a fetish of the black zero. So, mm -hmm. um, do you believe what we're seeing now will be enough to calm the nerves of many large companies that are probably considering investment in Germany? And what is it doing to Germany's reliability? Uh, absolutely. Let me first of all say that the whole approach uh, to keep the so-called debt break even tougher than, than it already was meant, so the black zero, this is really something for the bin. Uh, so we should really get rid of that interpretation. On the other hand, I think uh, we should not underestimate uh, the probability that the debt break can cover with it. Of course, it is a bit of a tough go for a parliament and of course opposition in a way has to cooperate, I think. Uh, but there are possibilities within the rule and I think the government is right to use these possibility which are given in the rule. That is a very technical explanation, but essentially we saw this constitutional court ruling and its effects are now endangering the stability of the three-way coalition that Olaf Scholz is trying to hold together. It's not that Germany doesn't have money, it's a question of allocation. And it doesn't look like the opposition is really going to join forces with the government to change this rule. So how destabilizing is this? I know you're an economist, but there mm -hmm. are a lot of other countries, Brussels, wondering what is now happening to the German brand of political stability through this. Yeah, uh, one should never overrate the possibilities uh, a government can, uh, can run in if there are really, really special times. And so we all have to accept that. Again, uh, I think the debt break rule is not just uh, at the end. I think it can still be used uh, and it can still offer a lot of possibilities to help. But of course, it is true the government faces some tough decisions how to do it. And of course, um, there should not be a full proliferation of the rule. This makes it very worse. And I think the whole debate is not just about the German constitutional debt break. Uh, this is really a bit of a fetish. I think we talk about a whole system of revenue and expenditure in, say, dangerous and very uh, important times where a lot of more money is needed for the budget, for investment, for but for other public expenditures too, uh, for security, for the transformation process we face. Um, and I think this is possible and the government has to think about the rule to make full use also of the exceptions of the rule, but they have also really start to discuss a debate about public spending and public expenditure and public revenue. And I think this is what is really missing in the debate. And you are right, it only will work if also the other parties, the big opposition party would join the crowd. And there's a huge question mark there. This could potentially actually see the government in its current form under pressure. Uh, but mm. looking at, 
you know, these many rules that we're talking about, that is also perceived as something very German. In fact, amongst the leading industrialized countries, it's only Japan and Germany that actually strive to have something like the black zero. So Germany is the odd one out. This is a, ver is a debate that most rich countries aren't having. Mm -hmm. So who's making the big mistake here? <laughs> That's hard to tell. I think uh, Germany, of course, has a tradition of uh, being a bit tough on too much debt. And if we look back in history, I think this is not completely a wrong approach. Uh, so I would not compare us to the Japanese here, by the way. They are much tougher. On the other hand, uh, they, for instance, had a very and still have a very, very loose monetary policy. Of course, Germany could afford more debt. This is, uh, this is everybody talks about it. And of course, it's possible. But I think what makes in the end a responsible fiscal policy is the right mix of the things. And uh, of course, we also have to reflect that against the political economy in Germany. Uh, let me put it this way. For instance, the US do not need a fiscal rule as we need to have it, because the so, uh, the society of the US is much more flexible and the governments, they raise taxes, they lower them again, uh, they raise expenditure, they lower it again, they are saving. And this is a bit uh, in Germany not really being used. So Germans like more stability and to this stability, we need a system which somehow is flexible. It can breathe, but it can also offer a long term sustainability. And again, uh, the debt break uh, was meant as a sustainability rule. But if we see now the challenges to the public finance system, we have to use first the full flexibility. And then, of course, we can also see, for instance, whether we have more uh, expenditure for the future. For instance, the debt break would very um, open, for instance, to have a kind of a future funds with uh, public-private partnerships. So there are possibility also to have a kind of a public finance and uh, private finance. So this is all possible within the rule. And uh, I'm sometimes worried why um, the government is not talking about these possibilities. Maybe they fear that the German public is so public conservative uh, and, and on the average, yeah, it's not about economists here, it's about the public, the voters, they want not to, uh, they want not to uh, endanger the voters here. So I think some solutions are simply not talked about. And this is also a bit curious, but again, I would call this part of the political economy in Germany. Well, in fact, we did saw, uh, see the German Chancellor today speaking in Parliament, explaining or actually giving more of a technical analysis of the problem rather than saying exactly what he would do. Um, mm. He reassured the German public that um, no welfare, no benefits would actually be endangered. He's actually literally said, you'll never walk alone. You can be safe there. Uh, mm -hmm. What he did not do is say that all those investments that were supposed to take place out of these 60 billion that are now no longer available uh, mm -hmm. would be safe. Is that the wrong priority? No, I think if it would really be like that in the end, I would agree it is the wrong priority. I think this investments, but again, investments combined with other high productive uh, expenditure, and this is not always investment, so we have really to be careful about that. Uh, this is really needed. And of course, it would be a bad blow if all these big industrial projects we really need in Germany uh, for our development uh, uh, this this has to be done, and I think it will be financed. So I do not think there will be a cutoff uh, of all this necessary investment. Added, a, a added, of course, these issues, we are not just investment, but transfers or even consumption payments, because this comes along with high productive industry. So I think they try to do a balance act. Uh, on the one hand, of course, they want to say, uh, we have to take care, we have to be more cautious. Uh, on the other hand, they will need all the flexibility uh, the environment offers, uh, using that also to keep at least, I guess, by and large, I do not want to make percentages here, but I think uh, if done in the right way and if put on the right financial track in the long run, and this cannot just be debt or more debt, 
uh, then I think it's doable. But it is not doable without hurting somewhere, without hurting anybody. There will be some projects which will be probably delayed or uh, or will be, become smaller. I would expect that, but I do not see a big stop uh, of our necessary structural reforms for more productivity, higher growth and doing the big transformation job we all need. As a public finance professional, um, it's 60 billion right now, it's 45 billion in concrete terms right now that need, that's, that's the size of the fiscal hole at the moment. How manageable is that for a country the size of Germany? And is that the bigger problem or is the political forces that have been unleashed through this, uh, which uh, essentially tears apart a very costly glue that was holding together a three-party coalition, is that the bigger challenge? for Germany right now and probably also the bigger risk. Yeah, uh, you may be right. Uh, so I think uh, anyway, so the whole of the 60 billions can be closed in uh, getting uh, again to the exception clause. And uh, it is already announced that for this fiscal year, the government will have uh, an additional exception from, from the rule, which is fine with the rule. So that's not overturning it. Uh, and probably my expectation would be they also, even if they don't like it, uh, will be have to be done in the next year. So uh, I think they have to make ends meet. Uh, and I think, again, they have the flexibility to do it on the short term. But I would strongly agree to say uh, they really have to tell the people what is needed, what they will do, and that they will not do it in a, some more hidden way. And then again, we need really to discuss with all parties, uh, democratic parties in the government, we really need to talk now. We have to start a process how we want to finance these big future tasks within the ruling of the federal constitutional court. It's difficult, yes, as you say, for the political economy, because a lot of people will not like some elements or and then as a coalition agreement must see that somehow everybody has an equal share of the good side and an equal share of the bad side. So some people have to jump uh, over saying we cannot save anything. Uh, other people will have to jump to say, yes, we might need also additional taxes for that. And it cannot just be done with debt or with savings or cuts. So uh, there is a way out, but I agree with you in this specific situation where the coalition is anyway under stress and nobody wants to lose because the next except, uh, elections are only two years away. So it makes it tricky. And it's really, really now an important point in German politics. We haven't seen, I guess, uh, since 2008, 2010 with a big financial crisis to overcome it and not just say, say, this is no, this is no, this is no. We have to go through something, uh, through a certain spot and um, the government can do it, but it needs cooperation again, also between the coalition partners and also with uh, the Christian Democrats. I think they will be needed too. So reform of the debt uh, break or will it be scrapped? What's your prediction? So my prediction is it will not be scrapped. Uh, it will be say so um, enriched, I hope. So there are possibilities within this fiscal rule and there are possibilities changing that fiscal rule. Uh, I think um, it should be kept in principle, but there are many things which can be done. Prioritizing of certain expenditures. Um, we can also move this, uh, this amount this is now a very technical thing. It's 0 0.35 uh, structural deficit. This can also be 1% uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 of GDP. Yeah. yeah, of GDP. So uh, that's very technical. So I do not want to talk too much about that. But there are possibilities. But this would need uh, a kind of a majority, uh, as we have it with a, a special funds for uh, for our military forces. It would be need the same. So without the Christian Democrats, uh, they can't do it, uh, but it is possible. And uh, I think this would not really be uh, an, a thing which would endanger German fiscal 
sustainability by no means. Yeah, there is room for maneuver within the debt break, and there is, I think, a lot of maneuver to do it a bit bigger, to have it a bit broader, uh, to ameliorate it. Uh, that, that is all possible, yeah. especially it's now um, on the go for 14 years and uh, the time has changed and there are more challenges and this can also be met with a certain additional amount of public debt. But we should be honest with ourselves, not just debt is the solution. We need a bit more solidarity, also looking at expenditures and uh, at revenues uh, in the public sector as such. It, 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 it is not just possible with cosmetics. So there is also a certain strength necessary. And if we sell it to the public honestly and openly, I think that people will follow in and uh, also will support, say, the middle part of our democratic spectrum, which is, I think, really necessary and will work. So more need for compromise across the aisle, but also more political pain ahead. Christian Castro, professor for public finance and one of the architects of Germany's debt break, the mechanism for the black zero. Thank you very much for talking to Deutsche Welle. Thank you very much for asking me and uh, thanks so much. Bye bye.